And it remains to be seen if the president's performance today impacts his reelection bid. Joining us live now is Dr. Carolyn Heldman, the professor at Occidental College. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Heldman. My pleasure to be with you. Now, this week, we've seen the president speak in front of large crowds at campaign rallies and also a last minute national address on the Supreme Court's immunity ruling. In your opinion, is he showing voters that his debate performance was just a bad night? Well, that's certainly what he is attempting to do, but we now know how catastrophic his debate performance was. We have a number of polls that have come out in the last four days. We know that 72% of the American public uh, no longer think that he has the mental and physical fitness to hold the presidency, and that is an alarming statistic, mostly because it means that it's Democrats and independents who are moving away from him because he's never had much Republican support. Uh, we also know that in many national polls, he slipped and that, and that the gap now looks to be about 6%. And that, that sort of a gap we have seen at different points in the last half a century, uh, but only when folks have, have lost. So for example, we saw it in 1980 with Jimmy Carter when he lost against Ronald Reagan. We had saw a similar gap in 1992 with George W. Bush when he ran against Clinton and lost. And we also saw that in 2020, that sort of a poll gap when Donald Trump ran against Joe Biden. So he has a lot of uphill work to do if he wants to convince his own party and independent Voters that he is fit for this office. Well, a number of Democrats have said that it is time for Biden to step aside, but Kamala Harris, who is second in command, doesn't necessarily have just overwhelming support. Do you think that that could change? Well, her poll numbers look very similar to Biden's. Obviously, they're not fitness questions, but she has been the target of a campaign to diminish her candidacy. And I think, you know, as someone who studies this, um, it, it has a lot to do with her being a woman and a woman of color and trying to kind of tap into those biases. So it is no surprise that she has very low approval ratings. Uh, so the, the challenge, though, is if the Democratic Party skips over her, they will likely alienate a very important base, which is Black women voters. They may uh, alienate women voters more broadly. So that would be a risky move. Um, there are other potential candidates who are polling slightly higher than Harris. Uh, but again, the Democratic Party would really face a, a lot of pushback if they skipped over Harris. Yeah, speaking of potential candidates, let's talk about Governor Gavin Newsom. He's currently out there stumping for Biden, but what is the likelihood that if Biden steps aside that he could be on the ticket? Well, the Democratic Party really wants to avoid a bloody kind of brokered convention, if that's what it comes down to, if Biden does indeed step aside. Um, it would be great if, if that happens for the Democratic Party strategically, for him to throw his support to a specific candidate. If that doesn't happen, sure, Newsom is in the race. Uh, Newsom would, is, is polling uh, about where Harris is polling. He might have an uphill battle in terms of convincing folks that he's not one of these, you know, super liberal Democrats because of, of his branding from California. Uh, but I would imagine that given his surrogacy, that he's certainly looking forward to 2028, if not 2024. I want to talk a little bit about the uncertainty and the impact of this uncertainty within the Democratic Party on other local elections that are happening in November. Are other campaigns having to change their strategy because of all of this? They're absolutely shifting their strategy, and they have been for quite some time because of Biden's low polls. A lot of local candidates, congressional candidates, have been distancing themselves even some Senate candidates, because they're polling higher than Biden. And that's highly unusual. Typically, you have, you know, at least uh, similar polling for a president and, and a Senate candidate, for example. But we're seeing it across the nation that folks are distancing themselves. Democratic candidates are distancing themselves from Biden as his polls are tanking. All right, Professor Caroline Heldman from Occidental College. Thank you so much.